One of the most common questions during my entire live stream playthrough of Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League was, is this game worth it or is it as bad as they say? Nearly every other message was one of these two questions, so I figured why not make a video on why I think it is worth it and why waiting to pick up the game might actually be a good thing too. Yes, this game is absolutely built as a live service game, but I do think the combat is a ton of fun, the gunplay feels great, and some of the decisions they made for loot is some of the most friendly live service versions I've ever seen, which I'll get into later on. Before we get into that though, let's do a quick overview on what Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League actually is. This game takes place five years after the Batman Arkham Knight game and is set within the same Arkham universe. For the main story, you can play as Harley Quinn, King Shark, Captain Boomerang, or Deadshot. You can swap characters at any time outside the mission seamlessly within the game too. There is nothing stopping you from changing who you play as every mission, although there are suggestions for certain characters to get more XP, do more damage, and take less damage for special missions. Still, that doesn't stop you from who you want to play as. I completed the main story and some support missions with around 15 hours of gameplay, and the cutscenes, the graphics, the dialogue, and most of the writing throughout the story was pretty enjoyable. There was plenty of times I laughed and plenty of times I was generally interested in what the objective was and what was going on. I'm not going to get into spoilers that you may have already seen in this video, but personally, I was fine with most things that played out. With that said though, I do feel like there is something missing or something that Rockstar is keeping behind closed doors still. At the end of the day, it's a game based off of comic book characters, so there really is an infinite amount of possibilities. What we think is true or 100% now could be changed within seconds, similar to how Thanos snapped away half the universe and Iron Man snapped them all back. If you're into that kind of stuff or you just like DC, then I think most people will enjoy the story that is told here if you keep an open mind and just get to know the characters. Speaking of the characters, they all felt great to play as. I personally started with King Shark and he's still my main, but I had just as much playing as Boomerang, Deadshot, and Harley Quinn. I even look forward to going back and leveling up each of them. They all have a different style of movement and weapons they can use to their advantage. And the movement can be a little tough to get a handle at first, but once you do, you can pull off some really cool looking kill shots and takedowns. Each character has a total of three different guns that they can use. So for example, King Shark can use a heavy weapon like an LMG shotgun and an assault rifle, but he can't use a pistol. Similarly, 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 Captain Boomerang can use an SMG, sniper, and shotgun, but he can't use an assault rifle. This really isn't a big deal because you'll have plenty of options for loot down the line. And that brings me to the loot. I've never really been hyper focused on getting a specific piece of gear or loot for any game I've really played. I've always taken the stance of if I get it, I get it, and that's pretty much it. In this game though, it's different. This game is filled with all different types of infamous weapons and infamy sets which are pretty much specific legendary guns or equipment that are related to a villain within the DC universe. For example, you can get a Two-Face themed wrist guns for Deadshot or a Black Mask themed sniper rifle. These guns typically have some specific stat that they apply for enemies like spreading to other en enemies or something similar to that. Infamy sets are like gear sets where the more you have of one set, the more stat bonuses that you get. Right now the main one is Bane, so if you have three pieces of Bane gear, you get the max amount of stats and abilities that those three pieces give you. Now one of the best things about this game is there is no gear score. Any of these weapons that you get while playing as any of the characters, whether they can use it or not, can be equipped and used on any of your other characters. There is no restriction for you to get a full set of main gear and equip it on a level 1 Harley Quinn, then level her with it, so long as she can use all the equipment or guns. There really is a ton of freedom for these sets. On top of that, it's actually pretty easy to change any of the stats or for that weapon if you don't like a specific stat that it dropped with. So how do you get these sets or infamous guns or equipment? During the end game, you play one of three missions that pretty much guarantee at least one of them to drop. 
there's not a 5% chance that you get it. If you do the mission, which really only takes about five to 10 minutes, you're getting the drop. Additionally, these missions are separated into categories that you can choose from. Only want to get legendary guns? Do the mission that gives you the guns until you get them all. Only want to get a specific grenade type or a shield mod? Do the mission that drops those. Regardless of what you complete, you're still making progress towards all your characters, which brings me to another thing I love about these characters. While leveling up as anyone, you continuously get new talents and perks that you can slot in. These can be anything from specking to a specific gun type, doing more melee damage, or making your traversal faster. As you level up and continue to get more perks unlocked, you will not only feel your character get stronger, but you will see the difference in gameplay. Max level is 30, but the last three levels drastically change some of your earlier abilities you unlock or massively make them better. You can also swap and change any of these abilities out at any time with, without any type of respect charge or currency. Once you hit the max level on at least one character, you unlock an entire new tree which is a legacy style of leveling. You continue to level up this mastery level and as you get new levels you will invest into this tree to increase the stats for all your characters. This can be getting more XP, more damage for a weapon, whatever you th can think of you can pretty much increase it. Systems like this make it super easy and friendly to level other characters and like I've already said it feels great leveling them and friendly to level other characters which feels great. That's a quick rundown on most things in the game but there's still so much more to it. I think if you're looking for a new looter shooter, a new third person shooter, or even just another co-op game, this will probably hit good for most of you. It sort of reminded me a lot of the fun times I had with Sunset Overdrive and a great story like Guardians of the Galaxy. Now for those of you that are still on the edge on whether to get it or not, just wait and see. Think of it like this. If you buy the game now, you get everything I explained and a little bit more. You still get tons of great boss fights and a decent amount of end game content. If you decide to wait a few months though, you'll get even more. We already know the first character being added in season one, which will be March 2024, is going to be an alternative version of the Joker himself. With that, we're also getting a free and paid battle pass and new stronghold-like missions. Battle Pass will also not have any time restrictions and will only include cosmetics from what we've seen so far. They can be completed at your pace and not have to worry about fear of missing out. This game was built from the ground up for optimization, so I don't really see any reason on why they would push back any of the current planned content too. But as always, anything can happen. Aside from Season 1, we're also getting a new character and missions in 2, Season 3, and 4. So by the end of the year, we should have 4 brand new characters and tons of new content. Even if you do end up waiting for Season 2, Season 3, or the final Season 4 at the end of the year, at that point you're probably going to get the game at a pretty good discount and will get even more content like I said. Either way, it really is a win-win. So is the game worth playing or buying now? Well, I hope this video helped you make that decision. Personally, I have been perfectly fine with picking it up and I've really enjoyed my time with it so far. I easily get burnt out of games most of the time by the time I reach endgame, but for some reason this game is clicking with me. I know this is out of what we expect from a studio like Rocksteady, but I truly hope that this game succeeds and does better than initially anticipated, but only time will tell with that. In the meantime, if this video helped you out, leave a like on it, subscribe for more videos like this, let's plays, or live streams, and as always, thank you for watching.